How Sally Learns in the Universal Knowledge Store. I started by implementing two different algorithms, neither of which uses backpropagation. For those of you familiar with machine learning, I'll contrast my algorithms and provide you with some interesting insights. If you haven't already watched part one and two, I encourage you to do so first to help you get the most out of this video. I had originally planned for this video to cover both learning algorithms, but the video got too long so I split it into two parts. Here are the topics for this video and the next. First, a little background and design philosophy. Then, the two new learning algorithms. And finally, Sally's overall resulting abilities. The intent is for Sally to be able to learn like a child without formal training sets. To understand how a child learns, we'll look at some background. We've all seen images like these of a neuron which is modeled as a simple artificial neuron. For details on the function of actual biological neurons, please refer to my video on How Your Brain Works Part 2 Neurons. Over the years, the model of the artificial neuron has morphed and the backpropagation algorithm has grown into deep learning and a myriad applications. But if we take away the parts which don't have a biological analog, we'll see that while backpropagation is an extremely powerful and useful algorithm, it just doesn't have much to do with how your brain works. Biological neurons work with pulses and the accumulation of pulses through weighted synapses. In the brain simulator, I have implemented two learning algorithms and intend to create several more. The first is an associative algorithm which allows Sally to associate words and objects based on the concepts of Hebbian learning. The second is reinforcement learning so Sally can learn to associate phrases and actions in the same way children might be taught by their parents who reward them for good behavior and scold them for bad. This algorithm will be explained in the next video. This first algorithm is analogous to Hebbian learning. This is the best understood biological learning mechanism which occurs on a cellular level. It is often loosely described with the phrase, neurons which fire together, wire together. There's a lot more to Hebbian learning than that, and I'll describe just a few details, but remember to consider this as just one piece of the learning puzzle. Let's consider the example of two knowledge store things, one firing when Sally sees something red, and another firing when she hears the word red. The learning task is to create links between these two things. With these links in place, when Sally sees something red, she can say the word red, and when she hears the word red, she can recall objects with that color. Let's abstract this by relabeling things A and B. In Hebbian learning with biological neurons, if A fires just before B, it is likely that A contributed to the firing of B, or it should have if it didn't. So if A fires immediately before B, neurons strengthen the synapse between A and B. If B fired first, it is likely that the synapse is not involved and it is weakened. Neuroscientists have measured synapse strengths and created this graph showing the change in strength of an individual synapse relative to the difference in firing times of the two connected neurons. If the time between firings of the two neurons is negative, that is if B fired before A, then the synapse is weakened. If the time is positive, then the synapse is strengthened. Let's call strengthening a synapse a hit and weakening a synapse a miss. One can observe a few things from this graph. Note that the time range in order to affect the largest changes in synaptic weights is less than 10 milliseconds. Note also that the number of hits or misses required to make a real difference is fairly small, so learning at the synaptic level can be reasonably quick, just a few samples. 
This means your brain can learn connections in as little as a hundredth of a second. Note also that there's a lot of scatter in the data. This means that any mathematical formula would only be a rough approximation of the actual mechanism. I've sidestepped this issue, as I'll show in a moment. The primary difference between Hebbian learning and association inside the knowledge store is that instead of keeping just a synapse weight, the knowledge store links record the raw counts of hits and misses. When Sally sees a red object, the color thing fires continuously. If she simultaneously hears the word red, a connection is created or the hit count is incremented. Sally might hear many words as she is looking at a red object, but over a period of time, the counts of hits and misses will filter out the erroneous and ambiguous input, effectively implementing the well-known signal processing technique of signal averaging to eliminate what is essentially noise. There are several advantages to recording the raw hits and misses. The first is that Sally can learn with as little as a single sample if it is correct and unambiguous. She can learn with a minimum number of samples as long as the hit miscounts are sufficient to overcome any errors and ambiguities. Now let's look at the process in action on the brain simulator. In the right-hand display, you can see that Sally is looking at black, and in the left-hand display, you can see that no words exist in the knowledge store. When I fire the action neuron on the world simulator, it examines the color of the physical object directly in front of Sally and inserts the appropriate word into the word stream, in this case, black. This causes a word thing labeled W black to be added to the knowledge store. Because the word thing fires at the same time as the color thing, a link is created between the firing word and the firing color. As Sally turns around, she sees different colors and the world simulator sends different color words. You can see that the words are added, each with references to all the colors, and you can look at the sign of the reference, which is the net count of hits and misses, to see that W black is associated with C0, W blue with C1, etc. This illustration contained no ambiguous or erroneous data, so only a single sample was needed. In a slightly more complex example, instead of simply saying black or blue, the world simulator sends the phrase, this is black, or this is blue. When Sally first hears the phrase, the words are completely ambiguous. Sally can have no idea whether the color black is associated with the word black, or the word this, or the word is. With the speed slider at the top left, I can speed up time to provide Sally with a larger number of samples then we can see that once again Sally has figured out that the word black is associated with the color C0, etc. because over time this has emerged as the most likely association. The word this is not associated with any color. We can look more deeply at the links from the word by expanding the references list, and this shows each of the reference links followed by the raw counts of hits and misses followed by the calculated ratio of hits to misses. We can see that for each color the ratio is less than one, meaning that for the word this, there are more misses than hits for every color. I'd like to underscore the simplicity of this algorithm. This algorithm is so simple that you might not even think of it as learning, but that's the point. Neurons in your brain can't do matrix multiplication or any kind of division. Neurons can add by ion accumulation and might multiply, 
by repeated addition, which only works if one of the numbers is an integer. So it is reasonable to assume that your brain's learning abilities are built from a collection of very simple algorithms. This algorithm can associate individual words with individual property values. A similar algorithm using the knowledge store's parent-child structure could associate words with class names like the word color referring to any color. Associations with multiple words, etc. will be many additional simple algorithms. I'll explain them as I implement them. In the next video, I'll finish up with the second learning algorithm, reinforcement learning. I hope you'll subscribe to be notified when the next video becomes available and go to httpbrainsim.org to try out the software for yourself. If you found interesting information in this video, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.